Hi everyone, today we'll take a look at non-precision approaches. I'm Mutkarsh and welcome to Flight Level 070. So let's look at the brief history of a non-precision approach. It's a 2D approach and provides lateral guidance only that follows the concept of uh, MDA, MDH which is your minimum descent altitude or height and uh, due to a lot of CFIT cases in the past history, the concept of CDFA was introduced which is your continuous descent final approach and all scheduled operators need to fly a CDFA approach only in a non-precision approach. So it's a mathematically calculated uh, vertical profile from your uh, final descent point all the way to your missed approach point. Also you add an additional margin of 50 feet on top of your MDH which is called the derived decision altitude. So let's go to the simulator and discuss the types of approach and how we can execute them. Okay, so we have three types of approaches. The first one is fully managed, so laterally is managed and uh, verticals is also managed, it's controlled by the FMS. Then we have lateral managed and we have vertical is selected. So we select the FPA on the FCU for this one. Then we have the third one which is fully selected. So you select a track for lateral and you select an FPA for your vertical profile. And for the configuration, the first one that is the fully managed can be a decelerated approach rest both have to be an early stabilized approach so now we'll go to the sim okay so we are in the simulator and first we'll be looking at a fully managed approach so we'll begin with our flight plan sequencing as that is the most essential part of a fully managed approach as your two waypoint should be meaningful and if you're being radar vectored it should be indicating your final descent point so let's go to the MCD and check what is our final descent point. So we have an indication of minus 3 degrees starting from FD28 Zulu. So we'll make this as our two way point. For that we'll put a direct to function FD287 with a radial in of 107 which is the reciprocal of our inbound. We check, we have an extended line and we insert that. After that, head nav is armed, so we disarm nav as we are being radar vectored. Then we'll activate approach phase to slow down. So we'll activate approach phase and reduce to green dot speed. So since this will be a fully managed approach, we'll be following the decelerated approach technique. And for that, we'll be reaching our final descent point at flap 2. Once we turn inbound and we are cleared for the approach, we can arm the approach and we'll see app nav final blue and the aircraft will intercept the final approach track. We can cross check with raw data by going into the VR mode and seeing if we are intercepting the correct radial for which uh, this approach it is courses 287 and we'll descend to our final approach altitude. So we have the VDEV here. We have final app, so we can set the go around altitude, which is 2600 feet only. Okay, so we are at green dot and we can select flap 1. Once we are flap 1, we can select flap 2 because we are below 2000 feet AGL. For a fully managed approach, your track should be within 3 degrees if it's a VR approach. So we have a track of 287 that is the exact same track and the descent angle should be within 0.1 degree of the charted angle which is correct. We are reaching our final descent point and uh, the VDEV is moving and the aircraft is initiating a descent. So we will select the gear down. Once the gear is down, we select flap 3 and when flap 3, we select flap full. 
then you cross check with the DME and the altitude from the chart. So at 5 miles we should be 1930, 5 miles we are 2030, so that is about 100 feet high. This is a discrepancy between the chart and the actual uh, sim because here it is just showing 10 feet high. I will disregard it just for simulator purposes. We have 1000 feet stabilized. Okay, once visual, you disconnect the autopilot, set the FDs to off, put the bird on and set the runway track. Then you align with the runway center line. So I will align with the center line. And then you put the tail of the bird with the track index. So once you are on the center line, then you put the tail of the bird on the track index. That will take you straight, taking into consideration the winds. Now there are some places which are colder than the generic environment and for that we have a limitation of a non-precision approach cannot be done fully managed if the temperature is well below the charted temperature. For example, I will show you a chart where the fourth line states that if the temperature is below this value then you put altitude correction. That is because an altimeter is based on ISA standards and the temperature is way too cold from ISA standards hence the tolerance is unacceptable. So we will see how we can execute a laterally managed and vertically selected approach and for that we need to be early stabilized at our final descent. So we will sequence the flight plan and thereafter execute the approach. Also as I told you that the two waypoints should always be meaningful. So we will sequence the flight plan to FD28 Zulu. Direct to FD28 Zulu radial in 107. And the nav is armed, so we'll disarm nav. So approach face is activated, and we have VDEV here. And we'll manage speed, descent to our altitude of 2600. Okay, some weird behavior by the simulator. So we are about 5 miles at green dots, we will select flap 1 and we will turn inbound. Once you are cleared for approach, you can manage nav so that it accepts the final approach track and you push track FPA so that we can select the correct FPA. We will select the FPA at 1 mile to our final descent and pull it at 0.3. We'll take flaps 2. Take gear down, flaps 3 and flaps full, if you were 1 mile we will set an FP of minus 3 degrees and at point 3 we will pull. Then we will cross check the altitude DME from the chart. Point 0.3 I will pull and we will set the go around altitude which is 2600. So at 
six miles we should be two two five zero. Six miles, we are about hundred feet high. As I told you, there's some discrepancy between the chart and the simulator, so we'll just follow this for now. Although, if there is, let's say, we are twenty feet high and you want to come back on profile, so for the correction, you go every ten feet decimal one. So, if it's a twenty feet uh, difference, you select uh, FPM minus three point two to come back on profile in the next one mile. So, if you set three point two at let's say five miles, you would be on profile at four miles. and then you can set 3 miles back again so that from there on it's comfortable also in the last approach i had forgotten to set the mda so this is actually your dda the chart shows an md of 1300 and i have added 50 feet so your dda is 1350 which will be your actual minimum 1000 we are stable again on see a visual you disconnect your autopilot fd is off bird is already on right now so you set the runway track of 284 and then you will manually fly the approach okay now so let's look at a fully selected approach wherein we fly the track as well as the fpa so for that uh, we we'll just sequence the flight plan so we have more reference so direct to fd28 zulu radial in 107 Insert and we disarm the nav, and I've activated approach phase and manage speed. We might require to do this if we do not have GPS primary or our navigational accuracy is incorrect, where we follow raw data to execute the approach. So we have our final descent point at seven point one DME. and uh, we'll set our descent rate of uh, minus 3 degrees at uh, 8.1 and at uh, 7.4 i'll pull let's descend to our approach altitude of 2600 feet and we'll select flap 1 it needs to be an early stabilized approach So now your workload is going to increase a lot. So I prefer that we finish all our checklists and configuration at least uh, two to three miles prior prior to our uh, final descent point. You have to be more conservative and uh, playing ahead of your game because uh, things come in very quickly. So we see that the needle is moving. So I'll give it a sharper turn. and the more close we are to the vor the more uh, active the needle is so you need to compensate accordingly so currently we are flying heading with fds we'll switch to track fpa so that we can fly a consecutive track so our final approach course is 287 Let's go flap two. So I'll give a little correction to the left and then set two eight seven. You got to anticipate as well that the aircraft is going to be a little laggy. So we intercept the final approach track and we keep a check on our DME for our final descent point. Let's get the configuration out of the way. So we'll select gear down. once we have the gear down we select flap 3 and once we have flap 3 we select flap 4 perform the landing checklist and then we can concentrate on intercepting our track and selecting our fpa so make a correction and then wait for it to come back and then so we are fully stabilized and we approach thrust is open and in landing configuration 8.1 i'll set minus 3 degrees 7.4 we pull our descent and set the goron altitude which is 2600 and do the altitude dme check so 
we are correct on the track so I will set 287 back. So we will check 6 DME, we should be 2250. So at 6 DME, we are 2280 which is about 30 feet high. And then we are disregarding the VDIP because we are flying a manual approach based on altitude DME. Although there is definitely some discrepancy between the simulator and uh, the chart. At 5 DME, we should be 1930. So we will wait. 5 DME, we are about 1960, which is again 30 feet high. So, as I told you, if we need a 30 feet correction, we can go down to 3.3 .3 degrees. Okay, 1000 feet, we are fully stabilized. 4 miles, we need to be 1610. You saw the VDEV that behaved very rapidly in the simulator. 4 mile 1610, we are on profile. So, once we are on profile, we can go back to 3 degrees. And then, once we are visual, we can disconnect the autopilot and set the runway track, put the FDs off. A non-precision approach is a very vast subject and I hope I could do justice to the little tits and bits of a non-precision approach. I hope you liked my effort and I thank all of you for your extended support for my channel. Please feel free to write me an email or Instagram or leave a comment down below. See you next time.